OK, so we've seen some arguments in the normal modal logics and uh, I just wanted to have a look at constructing counterexamples and invalid arguments and so on. Uh, now this is all really quite simple. The basic ideas for M, B, S4 and S5 are pretty much the same as for K. Uh, but I just wanted to have a look at them anyway. Uh, right, so let's consider the system B and let's consider this argument. If possibly P and possibly Q, then possibly possibly P and Q. Um, right, so let's draw our world here. Now, since I need to save space, I'm not going to write the negation of this conditional. Uh, I mean, you all know how to, to deal with a false conditional, so I'm just going to skip the step where I have to write it because I, I, I really need to save space this time. Um, so we have uh, a false conditional. Uh, unwritten, and that gives us, of course, true antecedent, false conclusion. Now, from this conjunction, we can derive possibly P and possibly Q. Again, I need to save space, so I'm placing them at the side up here. Right, since accessibility is reflexive, this not possibly gives us a false conjunction. And with this, we, uh, we need to branch, which on the left gives us not possibly P, on the right gives us not Q. Uh, not possibly P, contradicts possibly P, so that branch closes. Um, now that leaves us with this branch, this branch on not Q, and uh, at this point we've um, applied pretty much all of the rules we can except for these two possibly uh, formulas up here. So let's take possibly P and uh, use it to open up a new world in which we can derive P. Um, then of course we have the not possibly again, which gives us false conjunction. Again, we branch it. Uh, on the left, we have not possibly P, which, since accessibility is reflexive, gives us not P, contradicting P. Um, and again, we then have this side of the tree is still open. So we can now use uh, possibly Q up here to open up another world. Um, uh, and remember, if a branch is still open and the formula to which we're applying the rule is in a world above it on the same branch, then we place the results at the bottom of our open branch. Um, so uh, we have Q in our new world, and again, the not possibly gives us a false conjunction, which we branch as before. Um, not Q contradicts Q, so that part of the tree closes. Over here we have not possibly P, um, from which we can derive not p and and that's just about it uh, there's there's nothing more to be done here we've applied all our rules and as you can see the tree is still open um, so that means our argument is invalid um, right we can we can use this open branch to specify a counter example um, and since this is uh, a bit cumbersome, I'm going to scrub out the bits that we don't need. So right there we have our open branch, and we can we can write our counterexample. So uh, we have three worlds. Um, we have W O, W one, and W two. Um, w O and W one access each other. W O and W two access each other. And accessibility is also reflexive. Um, so let's read up the tree and insert the variables. Uh, well, um, in W2 we have Q and not P, so it goes in there. In W1 we have not Q and P, and in WO we have not Q and P is left undefined, so we'll say not P. Um, right then, we need our counterexample to give a true antecedent and a false consequent for this conditional here. Does it work? Well, uh, let's take the antecedent first, possibly P and possibly Q. Um, possibly P is true because in one of the worlds accessible from WO, we have P. Um, WO accesses W1 and P is true at W1, so possibly P is true. And by the same reasoning, possibly Q is true because WO accesses W2 and Q is true at W2. So that means, due to these two uh, worlds here, possibly P and possibly Q is true. So that's our antecedent. What about the consequent? 
Well, uh, the, the consequent is possibly possibly P and Q. So, in other words, we need a world, we need to find a world accessible from WO uh, in which uh, Q is true and in which P is true at some world accessible from it. Um, now, the only world at which Q is true is W2. Uh, so, possibly P and Q uh, can't be true in either of these. Uh, is P true at some world accessible from W2? Well, no, it isn't. Uh, it isn't true at W2, and it isn't true in uh, WO, and those are the only worlds accessible from W2. So this means at W2, possibly P and Q is false. We've got Q, but we don't have possibly P. And this means, all of this together means, that at WO, possibly, possibly P and Q is false. Um, so that leaves us with our argument up here. That leaves us with a true antecedent and a false consequent. The argument is invalid. Right, uh, as you can see, um, the technique for developing counterexamples is pretty much exactly the same as for K. Uh, you just have to bear in mind some changes in the accessibility relation. Right, I want to have a look at one more argument. Um, let's do a more simple one this time. Um, we'll take an argument in S4. Let's test this formula, uh, which, if you have a look at it, you'll see that this formula is essentially just the characteristic formula of S5. Uh, so again, I mean, we already know that this is going to be invalid, but let's, uh, let's have a look at it anyway. Well, assume the negation. Um, as you can see, I'm using the indexing method this time. Of course, uh, our accessibility is reflexive, so let's write that too. Um, now here, we have a false biconditional, which means that we, we branch, and on each branch, we assume different truth values for each side of the biconditional. Uh, looking at the left side here, since accessibility is reflexive, we can use this necessarily to derive possibly P, which is an immediate contradiction. That part closes. Um, so we can continue on the right here. Let's use not necessarily, uh, not necessarily possibly P to open up a new world, uh, wherein we have not possibly P. Um, now the reflexive accessibility relation gives us not p, uh, and there's nothing more we can do in, in that world, so we will now use possibly p up here to open up another new world, uh, which point we've applied all the rules that are available. Um, and our tree, of course, remains open. So that argument is clearly invalid in S4, uh, but let's define our counterexample. Well, we have three worlds, um, WO, W1, W2, uh, WO accesses W1, WO accesses W2, and all the worlds access themselves. Now S4, as I'm sure you know by now, is transitive, uh, but as you can see, we don't actually use transitivity here, it doesn't apply, um, so we can ignore that element. Uh, reading up our tree, we have P in W2, we have not P in W1, and uh, P is un undefined in WO, so we'll write not P. Um, okay, so uh, what we have to do is show that our formula here is false, and to show that a biconditional is false, we simply have to assign each side a different truth value. Can we do it? Well, uh, WO accesses a world at which P is true, so possibly P must be true at WO. What about necessarily possibly P? Well, this would require that at every world accessible from WO, possibly P is true. But um, WO accesses W1, and at W1, possibly P is false. Uh, so necessarily possibly P must, must be false at WO. The argument is, is invalid. Uh, we've assigned each side a different truth value. OK, so uh, I'm sure you can see how, how these techniques generalized to all the other systems. Um, I mean, it, as I say, it's it's pretty much just the same as what, what we saw in K. We just have to bear in mind, <coughs> we just have to bear in mind the different accessibility relations. Right, um, I want to leave you with some practice problems, just here, so you can have a go at them. 
try uh, testing them in all the different systems that we've looked at. We've had uh, K, M, B, S4 and S5. So uh, just have a look at those and, um, and that'll be that. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.